You want to go outside and talk to our YouTube friends? Uh oh, kitty got in. Oh, there's other ones. I can't. You can get them. <laughs> hey, you want to show everybody on YouTube your hat? <laughs> it's cute, huh? Yeah. We received a package um, about a few weeks ago from a viewer in our P.O. box with these incredibly adorable hats for all six kids. Uh, Malia's was like, you know, really colorful and then the boys were all kind of matching and some of them had these like little crazy frilly things on them, uh, like looks like crazy hair and some of them had poof balls. Super cute from uh, the Painted Stone Cottage. It was really sweet, so thank you for that. That was really uh, precious and Ben is very tickled with his hat. He's been wearing it a lot lately. Ben, what do you think about all this mud? Yep. Yuck. Days are getting longer and things are looking a little better. We're about to get some really cold weather in the next week. Thank you, Mom. This, this is called walking stick hail. And I'm um, thinking it's going to hold out pretty well until the warmer weather comes. And I'm hoping it just takes off at that point. Hey, ladies. Hey, ladies. Hello. So I've got you guys down in the garden today because I need to shoot a response to a challenge video. I was challenged in a little while ago. I thought it was a really cool topic, but I've been chewing on my response because um, it's not ac exactly like a typical one. So I was challenged um, by our friends over at You Can't Eat the Grass. Um, and the original challenge starter was my friend Kaylee at the farm on Quail Hollow. So I love both those ladies. They both have really great channels. And the topic of this challenge is a new skill for the new year. Of course, this you know was going around a couple weeks ago when the year was brand new. But it's still January, so we can still we can still talk about this. I am such a compulsive starter. Um, Jeremiah calls me an idea factory because I'm constantly like, oh, we could do this, we could do that, we could do this. I have ideas all the time. And I am so your typical right-brained creative person where I'm just very scattered and very excited. Um, I love beautiful things. I do uh, live in a really like state of wide-eyed wonder just about life in general. And this is something that I, I love. I, I protect those things. I protect my heart that those things can stay valuable. However, C.S. Lewis said that a man's um, strengths will overflow into his weaknesses. And, and, I, and I've learned that so often when a person has a passion or they have you know something that really drives them and moves them a lot of times you can see that the the flaws in their life and in their personality are so often the, you know it's the splash out of those passions it's the messes that get made you know you might have somebody incredibly driven and passionate but they're also very stubborn um, and, and hard to slow down my thing is, is that sometimes I get overwhelmed because I start more than I can possibly finish and so this year, um, we have actually f decided that we're not going to start a lot of new stuff. That is not how it usually is. Usually I start the year like geared up with a super long list. Now we have a lot going on. You know, we're having to move stuff around. We're still in the middle of remodeling. We're building different things. We are about to build a window greenhouse. Like there are a lot of projects that are going on, but those are kind of included in what's already going on, kind of finishing it up, bringing it up to the level of excellence that we want to be stewarding what we're doing. One of our goals for 2019 is to by the end of the year be growing 85% of our food. That's a lot. Um, up until this point we have grown maybe about 30 on average. You know in some seasons it's more than that and some seasons it's a little bit less. Mm -hmm. And so one skill that I'm looking to really hone in on this year and focus on and put into practice is being very resourceful in using what I have. Um, using what's on hand. That's just what we're going to eat. Um, that's what I'm going to cook with. No more going to the store and just buying what we feel like making. Oh, Kitten George. Gosh. Why are you... God, you're such a mess. 
you know, he doesn't do this to me. Whenever you guys aren't with me, um, he just completely ignores me. But when the camera's here, he's like, got to be all up in my business. <laughs> Are you going to get down? Are you not going to knock my camera over? So that's not really an, a new skill. Um, there are seasons in my life that by necessity I've been much more frugal in the kitchen and much more resourceful cooking uh, things from scratch or I've been just really inspired and so I've been, you know, used up everything, not waste anything. Uh, unfortunately, you know, life gets busy, convenience comes in and the next thing I know we're going back to going out to eat or buying convenience foods or processed foods and that's something that's like a real big goal for me this year. So it's not so much a new skill but it's definitely taking that skill and and making it a priority. You're so nosy. George, you're terrible. Another skill that kind of goes hand in hand with that is that I want to start fermenting more. Um, I have allowed too many scobies to grow an inch and a half thick in vinegar kombucha because I've just forgotten to bottle it on time and then just put it off and not rebrewed. Um, I know how to do these things. I still have uh, I have some kefir grains that are dehydrated. I do have like an ancient kombucha going on my counter that needs to be uh, refreshed and redone. And I would really like to get into the discipline of keeping up with that stuff. I did ferment a good bit when my garden was producing last year, but not regularly. I think I did some hot sauce and some pickles and a handful of different things like that. And it was really good, but I would like to get more into experimental stuff and making fermented foods part of our everyday diet. Um, so that kind of goes hand in hand with our first goal. And all of those things I've done before. So I, I'm not really learning how to do it, but it's it's implementing it. So I suppose that's less of a skill and more of a discipline that I'm going to have to come into because I'm just really bad about getting busy and forgetting things that aren't just completely demanding. <laughs> Lofty food goals and fermenting failures are fairly easy to talk about. Um, I think a lot of people can probably commiserate in wanting to do better in areas like that, but just um, lacking the wherewithal to make it happen. However, there's one more thing that is really the forefront of my mind in making the decision to not bite off any big new skills right now. And that is these guys. I have a tendency to get really busy and really absorbed with projects and the things that I am trying to accomplish. And in that, um, you know, a lot of stuff falls through the cracks. And unfortunately, in, in my life, I've had the habit of basically giving my time and attention to whatever was the most demanding and whatever intrigued me the most. It was, it was those things. So the demands and uh, my own interest and curiosity and, and desire to learn and to accomplish. And sadly, uh, a lot of the times that wasn't my kids. And one of the things over the last year and a half that I've really come to is uh, saying, I'm not gonna do that anymore. Um, I only have 15 more years to raise these guys. And that's Benjamin, you know, I mean, I've got a 13 year old. I've got, I've got kids that are closer to adulthood than they are to infancy. And so I just don't wanna miss it. I wanna be present. And the whole reason why we're doing all of this, why we decided to grow our food and to go ahead and make the sacrifice to get out into the country and do the homesteading life was because I really wanted to raise my children this way. And in the past, I've gotten so absorbed with getting the projects done that I put the kids in front of a screen so that I could get the work done and you know Jeremiah and I have talked over the last several months and just decided that we're unwilling to do that anymore and that may mean that we have to do less and I, I think the main thing that I'm having to learn this year is to be okay with that uh, and to be at peace with finishing well uh, with completing what we've started and just uh, honestly just stewarding what we have in excellence because we do have a lot going on. There, there are a couple of things that we're kind of doing new this year in the sense that we're going to be adding some garden space and um, putting in berry bushes. We've never grown those before. We're talking about the possibility of getting bees but we're thinking about even putting that off so that we can really focus on what we've already got going. So I've 
been pondering this question for a couple of weeks because I'm like, what new skill am I really going after for the new year? Um, and I don't, I don't know that I have one other than being content and okay to manage what I've already got well and to go deeper in knowledge in those things and become better in those things. So I, I know that's not really the answer to this challenge, but that's my answer and I'm feeling pretty good about it. So um, I think I'm supposed to challenge some other people, but I'm really late on this. So I don't know who all has already participated in it. So if you are viewing and you would like to make a video sharing uh, your new skill or your plan uh, for that for the new year, uh, please do. And I'm so thankful to Carmen Quail Hollow for starting this. I think it's a great inspirational discussion topic. And also uh, for you can't eat the grass for uh, tagging me in it. I loved yours and I think your flowers are going to be wonderful this year. I'm so curious to see what all you decide to plant. So I appreciate all of you guys watching and for joining us in this journey um, and encouraging us every step of the way in everything that we're doing, uh, new and old. Thank you guys so much. God bless you. Until next time. Now that I'm no longer sitting in front of the camera, I'm so beneath Kitten George.